Someone asked on the Facebook Osmos group about a Bandonian preset, and while there are some factory presets that can be made to sound close to a Bandonian, let's use Loris to create a pseudo-sampled version of a Bandonian and see if that's going to be an acceptable solution. Now in Loris, you can create a raw analysis sometimes, which is a very simple thing to do. You don't even have to know anything about how Loris operates. You just need to use your ears, know a few button clicks, and you can easily create this raw analysis that does not do any formant processing. The raw analysis is very good for when you have something that is unpitched, very noisy, or maybe very, very harmonically complex, where formant processing is not going to be very helpful. But raw analysis can also sometimes be very effective on a simple tone played at one frequency that you'll use to try and create a pseudo sample or lo-fi sample, which is not really sampling, because we're only going to be using this one set of harmonic data, one set of partial data. But sometimes it can be very effective. And that's what this video will do, show you how to create and use a raw analysis. The first thing we'll want to do is create our sample that will convert in the Loris Synth application. Here I have Cubase up. I've created an instrument track and I've loaded up a free Bandonian I found online, which seems to work pretty well. I have a contact track here. This was done a while ago. I'm running in contact seven. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on sample libraries because you're not really playing samples here. So go online if you want to try and do this. See if you can find some free samples. Of course, if you have a sample library already, use that. I've got this free sample up. I can play some notes. <laughs> Find one that has the characteristics of the instrument that you want. This tone seems to be pretty good. Here I have the Osmos as the controller for this. Now remember right now, Loris can only be used with 10.44 or later DSP firmware. So it's not going to run native on the Osmos until that is ported. But the Osmos can certainly be used as a controller to play an Egan Matrix module or micro or continue mini or continuum that has one of these Loris analysis loaded into one of its 40 possible analysis slots. So we'll just set this up to record a very short note. That's all we need. Something that has the initial attack profile, maybe the ending release, and a steady tone for a little bit, because when we index into this thing, we might not even use the beginning and the end. Play it back. All right, that seems to be okay. Anything from one to eight seconds or so is useful, but when you want to just record a single tone, a simple little one to two second sample like this is going to be fine. What we'll do is we'll go in, we'll export that to a WAV file with some name that we want to create. Okay, we've created the WAV file that we're going to load into Loris and create our raw analysis. However you want to create the sample is fine as long as you create a sound file. Loris can handle not only WAV files but AIFF and a lot of other different formats, but I suggest you use an uncompressed audio format for your initial uh, sample file. Now we've brought up the Loris Synth Pro application. This is available from the Microsoft or Apple stores. You will need the Loris Synth Pro row version, the paid version, to create your own analyses from samples. There will be a Loris Lite version coming soon that will allow you to take pre-existing analyses and load them in and play them with simplified overlays that are provided in the Loris Lite application. But here we have Loris Synth Pro. We will go and get our file. So here's the file that we created, Bandonian Basic. We'll drag that to our editing window. We'll take the sound down a bit. We can play it. 
what you'll usually do is highlight the area you want to use as your analysis, normalize it, that will normalize it to 0.9 dB, that is the max MSP default. A lot of the defaults in this program are related to max MSP configurations. Now I can go highlight the area that I want to play. I'll normally want to crop out as much silence from the beginning of the sample as I can because when I index into that and play it I don't want silence to start it. I want it to start close to where my sample is but as you'll see I don't necessarily have to index the beginning of the sample and I'll crop near the end as well. There can be a little silence at the end as well. I probably am not going to index to the end as you'll see anyway. So there I have my little sample. I can choose to crop that if I want to. Play it. There you can hear it's a lot louder. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these predefined settings to select an output that sounds best to me. There are a lot of other controls here, a lot of fine tuning that you can do, but for raw analysis, I don't care about any of that. All I'm going to want to do is hopefully find one of these seven settings that when played sounds okay to me. That sounds okay using the standard one. Low frequency to me sounds almost the same. Some of these are going to sound very similar. Some of them might distort. There, using that one, it distorts. Don't worry about what this is doing. What you'll see it does is it creates an analysis with a number of partials. The low frequency one will create less partials because it's emphasizing the low frequencies. So, all right. Low frequency sounds good, and actually, when it comes to raw analyses, sometimes low frequency seems to work best. So now, I don't care about any of these other complex controls that you'll be using when you create a channelized analysis that can support formant processing. I'm going to go right to raw analysis. I'll extract my raw partials. This extracts slices of 64 partials. And you can see here, most of it is green, which means there's not too much noise in the partials. At the bottom, you can see a little bit of red and yellow that indicates noise. And this seems to be pretty good extraction. So once I have this, I can play it to see what it sounds like. That's pretty close to the original to my ears. And now what I want to do is store this to one of my analysis slots in whatever Egan matrix instrument we have. So I'll select what I have here. I've got a continuum, an Egan matrix micro. I have an Osmos that's not going to be useful because I can't support that, an Egan matrix module. So let's select the Egan matrix micro. You'll see your device turn blue. If it doesn't turn solid blue, it means your device was not connected properly. You'll have to debug that. And now what I can do is I'm going to select one of my 40 slots. I'll store this in the first analysis slot. The next thing we do is we save the file. I'll bring that up, create a name. I will save this to a file called Bandonian. And I know this is a raw file, so let me say it's raw. For R, you can create your own kind of categories if you want. And I'm going to say this is saved in slot 1. It's very important to notate the slot in your name when you store these analysis files. You can see it's creating a MIDI file. It's not really MIDI in terms of playing MIDI. It's just storing the analysis using MIDI CCs and other MIDI constructs, kind of like the way an Egan matrix preset uses a mid file to store its preset configuration. So I'll create the name, I'll save that. You have to create and save your file first because when you save it to your Egan matrix, it actually reads the file you just created to save it. So when you create that file, if I created that file and it's going to save it to slot number one, 
whenever I use that file after the fact, if I load it back into Loris, it's going to load into slot one. Now you can copy from slot to slot, so it doesn't really matter. You can change things around later if you want. But now I'm going to say, send saved analysis to the Egan matrix. I'll just click that and you'll notice preparing to download and then it starts downloading your analysis to the micro in this case. That's all I did to create the analysis here. I only used my ears, used one of my standard predefined settings, creating the raw analysis, saved the analysis file, and downloaded it. Now I can also say that you can set this for testing to an Osmos and play the analysis that's on your computer. So if you want to get a head start, even though you can't run Loris on your Osmos, you can use your Osmos with Loris to create analyses and test them. Okay, here it's almost done. The analysis is loaded, and when an analysis loads, it will automatically bring up this cycling overlay that you can use to play your preset. Now in this case, I've loaded to an Egan matrix module. So if I play my Osmos, nothing's going to happen because the Egan matrix module has no keyboard to play. Now if I downloaded this to my continuum, I could go right to the continuum now and, and start playing. And that's it. I've created my analysis. I've downloaded it to my micro. So when this is available for Osmos, when the cycling overlay comes up, you can select that or one of the other overlays and start playing directly with your Osmos. But we're going to use a custom preset to play this right now. So finally, I brought up the Hawken editor for my Egan Matrix Micro. I set to a preset I've created to play the raw analysis. These presets I'm going to make available. And because the Micro needs a USB MIDI host to play without a computer, I'm going to use the editor to play it and I'll set the Osmos to be the controller here, the external music data interface that's going to play my micro. So now I'm set up, I have my Loris synth loaded, I've set to some configuration that I like here, I've selected one of my 10 analyses that are set for each bank of 10. When you use the Loris synth, you'll be able to select from one to 40. When you use the editor, you have to select a bank of 10 and here you can see the first bank that I've defaulted to here the first analysis that's in there is my raw R1 analysis that I just created it's loaded in there with some other analysis that I already have and I've set my starting index point in the analysis I have set the speed I want to index through the analysis I set the ending point index of the analysis I have some other controls here specific to this particular preset, but the bottom line is now I can just go ahead and play my bandolion, and it sounds pretty darn good just using this raw analysis technique. Not always going to sound great for every kind of sample, but in this case, it works pretty well. <laughs>